ladies and gentlemen. It's hard to sit still. Hands are going crazy in the audience. All right, so uh, so cool. So we, you know, people we'll let uh, people pour in um, over the next few minutes, but we'll get started now. So uh, obviously, man, first and foremost, um, for those that don't or have never met Kevin Edwards, this is Kevin Edwards. He is our branch manager and loan officer up in Reno, um, and uh, he is crushing it. And one, I just wanted to say thank you from obviously from us at Arbor and probably all the LOs that are going to be on the call just for taking some time out of your day and give us uh, and just having a conversation, man, and, and giving us some more insight into kind of your background and, and how your production's running. So thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, so, man, so I guess, you know, like most of these podcasts, you know, it's, it's, I think it's really useful for people to get a feel for who you are. So if you could just kind of Give us some background about yourself, maybe some personal stuff, and then just uh, kind of like your your story of how you got in the business. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, happy to be here. I've watched the other podcasts. So, you know, always learning and hope people and could pick up some tidbits from this call. For me, myself, obviously, I was never, never was thinking I wanted to be a mortgage broker when I grew up, but um, turned out to be a great opportunity for me because... Um, I was in baseball coaching and education and, you know, that kind of hit a dead end when you get a family and you need to make more money. You couldn't survive on three jobs and virtually minimum wage. So my wife, um, her best friend or one of her friends was a manager at iMortgage Loan Depot and introduced me to her a couple of times. It was just hard for me to leave what I you know, you, you think this is what you're going to do the rest of your life. And then I made the switch and haven't looked back. That was March of 2016. I came into the business. So right on man. in retail. And then how, how did you, from that transition, if you're like I mortgage, how did you kind of find your way into kind of the broker world? Yeah, it was, I remember it very clearly. It was fourth quarter of 2018. Um, started to see that uh, volume w went down, rates went up, you know, that fourth quarter rates went up. And I started to ask more questions to my manager and some of the more veteran loan officers in the office. And I was asking them, how come my VA and FHA rates are the same as my conventional, you know, and all our marketing material says an advantage is lower, better interest rates, right? It's like, and I was still pretty green because only been two years in the business and you drink the Kool-Aid and <laughs> go to Todd Duncan and you're really learning how to sell around the rate, you know, to be, to be quite honest, but, um, I needed to know more. So I asked questions, looked behind the curtain. And then at our company, I was at finance of America at that time, we had a couple different outlets. One that like, I, I really got tired of losing deals. So it's like, okay. Um, you know, how can I get sharper? And how can I be in control of my pricing? Well, you start to hear that other lent, or other loan officers in the company were running some borrow paid deals through FAM. So I started to do that to where it'd be like a net zero. And, you know, so then that starts to get to the regional and the branch manager and they don't like that because it's taking the cutout of the pie. But then also I was, we had an, an opportunity to take loans to Stearns through FAM. And okay. I would go in to the back end and I created a relationship with the account manager. And I was like pricing loans every day to see where Stearns was sharper than FAM. And that meant that I was going to have to take this deal to Stearns. So I started taking deals to Stearns because it was a it was better, significantly better, even with FAM's comp into the into the broker transaction. Okay. And I take some deals to Citadel, which is now Acra. So I started to just explore and get out there. And then, um, you know, Tommy and the ripple effect, you know, Tommy was looking to around um, Lone Depot. And then I remember the introduction to you 
I was prospecting at a realtor's office and you called me that night and it was just like um, kind of epic um, storm, perfect time for Good timing. 2019. And I was planning, actually I came to broker because I wanted to prepare for this type of market, right? Anyone can survive in the mortgage bonanza that happened, but I wanted to be prepared for, you know, we're going to thrive in any market in this channel. And that's what I was preparing for was the thin markets and, you know, how we can, how I'm ready for it and not um, saying, I wish I would have. Right. You know, that's a, uh, that's such a good point, man. And I actually, I feel like that is something that it gets really lost. Right. Because, and it's interesting given that you came into the business even uh, after like 2008 and really haven't, seen a super thin market. Uh, you know, one of the things that I was just trying to put out there a couple of weeks ago, just to loan officers in general, was to really educate themselves on like the history of the mortgage market, right? To actually see and go back in time and kind of like understand, um, you know, what those cycles look like and who was thriving in those cycles, right? Because I think it's only from like looking backwards and going, wow, like, you know, what was the mortgage market like in like 1990 to like 98 or, or to 2000? And then what was it like from 2000 to 2008? And there's like, and I think you'll find there's these big like markers in time, like 2008 is like this big marker where the market shifted. And I think now, um, I think we're in one of those markets right now as well. And I think uh, you pivoted obviously at a, at a really great time because now you're, you're dialed in, in this channel and, you know, we can tell and just for I don't think I hit this on the start of the call, but just to kind of give everybody who's here just some background into Kevin's production. So Kevin right now, as of today, is the number one uh, actually unit and volume producer at Arbor. He's funded year to date. Um, actually, sorry, his pre, and this is just MMI stats on the 14 month roll, but he's at 58 million and 138 units, which is, you know, that's that's huge volume, and huge production. That's a testament to you know, him getting in and mastering that craft. So, um, you know, kind of it's interesting because when you look back on that 14 month production number that you put out, right, with like 58 million and 138 units. And it's been a it's been a grind, dude. You know, 2000, 2022, late 21 market shifted. What what would you say? Like, what was your mindset in that market as the, as things turned post COVID? Right. And things got hard. Um, and you had obviously made the shift to be in a, in a place where you felt like you had the chops to be able to survive. What were you doing in that 20, late 21, 22 market now that's kind of got you, uh, and, and kept your production where it's at? Yeah. You know, for me, it's like, um, I read everything. I watch everything. So I'm just, I just am a sponge for this business and it's, it's hard to explain, but um, I, through all the noise, I filter through it and I don't implement everything because I'm just realistic about that. But I do um, attach on to things that I know are going to be of value to me or my mindset. And really, for me, it starts with my mindset. And and I watch all the UWM stuff that, you know, those videos are so impactful for me. I don't watch their sales huddle, but I just watch the fast break and the three points, right? Those are just okay. easy little nuggets. It's like those tidbits are so easy, but um, Matt, the CEO, he said he kept talking about two things and it was like, don't have a scarcity mindset, right? And I was like, hell yeah, that's like, I love that because there's going to be a lot of fear and you you got to have the the thriving mindset not a scarcity mindset so really you know having that be like a pillar of my mindset has been an important part of it um in addition to that um you you know when volume was high it's like a lot of stuff goes to the voicemail and you're struggling to to pull out of that um that trap of the follow-up and follow-up's always been a strength of mine. Um, it's been one of my number one pillars for my real estate agents is to be able to tell them that, you know, you if you give me something, I'm going to get it to the finish line. And I'm not talking about the loan. I'm talking about converting on the customer and the buyer. And that follow-up has been um, really what's built my business is 
my ability to follow up, my ability to bring those buyers back to the realtor and so how so can you dive into that like a little bit more so it sounds like that might be a little bit of a different process than i think what we see with most loan officers so you know you're, you're you know because a lot of loan officers right we we get the referral from the realtor and it's about that transaction so it sounds like when you're talking about following up that it like it's a deeper level there from a from that it word. Is, so what is what's yeah, that process it's that, like? It's that constant, it's like a triangle, right? It's here's so and so, and here's what they think is their either a hurdle or they're ready to go right right now, or this is the hurdle. It's like I don't the hurdle doesn't scare me away, you know? Um, mm -hmm. nor does the timeline. But to be very transparent, it's like um and I just did this yesterday with a realtor and a buyer that I was nurturing through application and text and calling. And then he comes back and, you know, he, if the ghost doesn't bother me, you know, it's like you ghost, I'm going to stay on you until you tell me to go away or you like, you actually give me something that's tangible. And in this instance, cause we know everyone's so busy, but they appreciate it when you stay on them. And, the guy came back to me and said, I just had to sign a lease. I need to save some more money. Um, but let's, let's pick this up next year. So then, so then I say, I set my calendar and when I set my calendar, you know, it's like, it's done, right? When it's on yeah. my calendar, then it's getting done. So it's just as easy for me as setting my calendar and, um, telling the realtor that I've set my calendar and the realtor can set their calendar too, but I'm not, yeah really babysitting that I just got to take care of you know what I can control well and when you set your calendar you're logging in and you know that 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 referral is from that realtor and so when you go back a year from now and you then bring that client back to that realtor who they probably have not put it on their calendar and then you serve that back to them there that's that's a huge value add right yeah it's big gold and it's big gold even just for me to to like commit to that for the realtor so yeah. the realtor psyche is um, really like, hey, this person is like doing his job, right? Or yeah, and and yeah. did you like so when you look at like your process up there with the number of realtors, like would you say that that's where your growth of business is? It is it mainly realtors in your market, and that's how you kind of got in there and started winning through that through transaction by transaction, or what? What were you doing to really kind of get yourself in front of realtors and, and develop more relationships and maybe anything outside of realtors or, or off your past clients? Like what, what kind of fueled your continual? Well, the real, yeah, it started with realtor referrals, but then also the focus on listing agent okay. and converting that listing agent on every <laughs> transaction, making that call post close. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not making weekly status update calls. Um, I just don't get on the phone that much with the realtors through an escrow period because I'm, I have a team, but I'm really like the conversion specialist. Like I need to be, I don't have my number two, like on the phone trying to convert the buyers or the borrowers. Okay. It's just the fallout, too much fallout. You know, I guess I'm too in control up front. Um, so I use obviously EIOS and those updates are sweet because the text feature um, and um, the email feature. But a little side note on that, that when we're submitting our deals, we're making sure we're scrubbing for those cell phones because the contract a lot of times has office and we want that cell phone number in byte so that the text message is coming through because when we have that realtor meeting, they love the text. Yeah. The text is a game changer on the status updates and what a time saver. I don't need to go above and beyond that to differentiate myself. So I, so I think that's, that's actually a really good point. And I, hopefully everybody, uh, everybody who's on the call from Arbor and what, you know, again, when we talk about EOS a lot, people, um, there's folks that are active inside of EOS, but, but even if you're just using like what Kevin's talking about and taking advantage of the, of the in-process purchase automation, which is going to send out the text messages to the realtors at different stages. And it's going to also send them an email. His point, which is again, and this just gets back to some other, I think Jay made this point in a previous podcast and we kind of hammer this home 
as much as we can. Like it's all about, you know, the data in your database, like your, your efforts in your database are only as good as the data. Right. And so to Kevin's point here, you know, there could, you could be going along and thinking that you, that, Oh, Hey, they're going to get text updates and they're going to be happy. But you know, you got to double check and verify that you actually have the correct cell phone number for those realtors so that you know that the big benefit of your follow-up and that that kind of like perfect loan process that you can have is actually working and going out, right? What a bummer if, and and unfortunately there is not a way inside the plat, inside of our system to be able to flag and be like, hey, that w- went out to a bad text number, right? So <clears throat> I think that's a really good point you make there is, it, is to double check your data up front so that you can leverage the automations to free you up to do other stuff. And I put that at the top of my submission. It's the most important thing in my mind. Other, I mean, I can tell the story. Everyone tells the story of their loan, but I, I mean, I put that right up front. Here's the listing. Here's the buyer. Here's the sell. And I verified it. Someone's got to verify it. It yeah. can't be a maybe, you know, even right. if you're asking them for their cell phone, you got to get it. So that's, um, that's, a, that's a great point. And then at the closing of the transaction, calling that listing agent, um congratulating them but anytime you bring humility into the business you know it attracts people to you um and you know so it's something like congratulations um blah 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 great job i'm always looking for ways to improve can you give me any feedback on things i could do better you know in the listing agent and a lot of times most of the time it gets you right and them right in the palm of your hand um and then you then you're able to convert an appointment that is dude that is such a stuff. great point right and that is um dude humility humbleness right and it's so interesting because you know i think loan officers today are trained you know everybody's trying to convert that listing agent that, that's like a practice that people try to do um but it's like how do you gain the trust or how do you have an entry point into that listing agent that gets them to actually pay attention to what you're saying and actually kind of humanize you or connect you to, to build a relationship, right? So going the the humility route and asking for ways that they can give you feedback to improve is that's that's just hopefully people have their pens out and you're writing that down as a as a nugget. That that is that is a nugget. It doesn't open all the doors, but it, it definitely like it opens a lot of doors because some of them they'll just be quick and I don't want to work with people that are not connected to me, you know, yeah. but it, it does create a lot of opportunity. Very cool. And what about like on the buy on the, on your borrowers, right? I mean, do you have, do you do anything like post close for your borrowers to like inspire more referrals from those from like that angle or. I do. I, I work um, Google reviews really hard. I, my office is really close to my house. It's in a good zip code. So when someone Googles mortgage broker from their house, and if they're nearby me, you know, I'm going to come up on top. So I, I work the Google review and I send it so to when them. When you say you work the Google review, can you, can you, cause I, I don't know that everybody knows what working the Google review. Oh, what I mean by that is, you know, one of our automations asks for a review. Right. So how many reviews do I convert off of that? Not very many are converting off of that. But okay. what I do do is I I I have another system that I use post close okay. and it's a text um, request and a follow up text with regards to requesting referrals. Kind of it kind of spams them for a little while, you know, yeah. but it's fine. It's like. Um, so I'll get the Google review also let them know that, um, the best way for me to grow my business is through re- reviews. Yeah. So again, uh, giving that, um, humanizing it some for them. So they understand that this review is, um, it's my livelihood, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. So, and so I, and then I respond to the review. Um, so that's things that I've learned through optimization through Google, um, putting in different keywords into my replies, like mortgage broker rates, things that will help to um, create more 
uh, viewers onto my page okay. and the Google and Google business. It's, it's been good for me. Um, I do get quite a few calls just off of that. So that's awesome, man. I mean, and again, I think for, for loan officers that are, that are on the call right now. Right. And, and I think it's, it's, this is kind of, again, one of those, and we do these podcasts so we can try and pull out as many nuggets of things in terms of what are like differentiators between, you know, maybe checking the box, right. And, and actually like going beyond just checking the box to the point where you're doing something that's actually driving in more business, right. Or giving you the opportunity to get more business. And I feel like the way you're describing like your mindset on how you're going to convert reviews on Google is a great example of that because yeah, Arbor, we have, there is an automation that's going to go out. And I think a lot of people, whether it's Arbor or different companies, there there's all kinds of different review platforms out there that will go try and harvest a review, but it's, it's going that next level of saying, okay, Hey, look, I need to follow up and find out on that successful transaction. Did I actually get the review? If I didn't, I'm going to put them in another conver review conversion campaign, right? To kind of spam them through, get that review. And then ultimately, when I do get that review, I've also done my homework and I know that I'm going to reply to that review with specific keywords to continue to kind of like to level up the process, right? And it's almost like when you sit there and you're like, okay, we're all, we're all originators and we all know that getting a review is good. But if you were to say, hey, how is that going to really help my business and get me deals in the future? Well, I send out a review request. That's like a three out of five on the scale, right? And then it's like, I follow up with my reviews after they close and I make sure I get them in like 85 certainty. Well, that's like a four out of five for you on your leveraging that tool. And then if you actually reply using the proper keywords to, to accentuate those searches, now, you're, now you are maximizing the value of that one tool you can use to grow your business, right? And I think... Kevin, to your point, I mean, that's just a great example of you doing something that is taking, I think what even myself personally, I'll just out myself, like I'm doing the three-star version, right? I just rely on it, but I'm not circling and following up of somebody taking a, a process and mastering that process and doing the little things that really drive more bits. Yeah. And it's not like nobody's perfect and it's, but, you know, I've gone through phases of this is most important and then you have gaps and you can't go back you know it's like oh god you know there's several gaps where i had opportunities to really hammer on review and you just you lose those review opportunities i'm not going yeah. back and trying to re regain those um so but once yeah when it becomes another pillar then it's like you just you just go for it so so just from a and just from like a prospecting standpoint, right? So you're going out there and you are you're closing a bunch of deals. You've got your Google reviews. You're picking up on the listing agent. Have you do you ever do any like cold? Are there is there like cold marketing that you're doing, or is there are there is there anything that you've done where you're like, wow, I did this like one or maybe two things where this thing it like really worked, and you were able to like rep like do that process over and pick up whether it was realtors or advisors or borrowers were like, dude, that's just, it was a game changer. Well, I had for probably three years, I was buying Zillow mortgage leads. Okay. And those were good. And they'd go into call action. So the other service is like a text service Uh huh. that that would be all my leads would go into that database and yeah. it'd be text to convert like automated text to convert with other features. You could trick it out pretty good. Uh, they also uh, give opportunities for reactivation campaigns. So I can reactivate essentially that entire database. Yeah, I may, I'm not organized enough to like weed out the ones I've already converted. So it's kind of like for Somebody me, might. I'll just let them wear <laughs> it, you know, they're going to wear it. Yeah. But <laughs> if I hey, up... there's no, there's no such thing as bad, as bad PR, <laughs> right? <laughs> but so that's some of the the other part of my database it's not cold um do you still do I, now so we, did i did you, a lot of cold still... calling early on you know with warm cold stuff um and do you uh, do you still do zillow leads or do you feel like your database is big enough that it's just now building on itself or i cut that out just like actually a couple months ago okay 
um, because I did, I'm doing the Wow Me 2.0. Okay. And I'm doing six product releases with them. And I'm going to give them a try at some of their ROI campaign on conventional loan, FHA, VA, DSCR, reverse. So I've built, purchased six products from Wow Me. Okay. And they're putting that out there kind of, you know, where you're looking up uh, truck bed liners and then all of a sudden truck bed liners are all over the place. Okay. Yeah. So, just on the, on the retargeting campaign. Because what I was, I mean, I was spending on Zillow and I was spending on um, some pay-per-click, just the basic stuff to get me up to the top in other counties. Um, yeah. But I was like, um, I'm going to shift my budget and see what happens. So, okay. So that's kind of, that's, I think that's, that's, I think that's really interesting. And I think for people out there who are trying to run, you know, obviously we're, we're at, we're kind of, we're an independent mortgage company and everybody has their ability to kind of market themselves and search for deals and um, whether they're buying leads on their own stuff. But I'm curious from a marketing budget standpoint, like how much, how much do you, do you take a percentage per deal? Like, how do you build your marketing budget? What, what would you say that's a percentage so that people out there have a good idea to know that, that what, yeah, what, you, what people are reinvesting in marketing? Marketing is about 20%. Okay. So I think that's a really good takeaway for some people that, you know, look, we've got a top loan officer out there that is taking about 20% of their, you know, their budget and using that for some type of, and would you say it's all kind of online marketing? Um, in, yeah, it's all online. Um, and do you, do you share that with realtors? Do you do like co-branded campaigns with them or do you try and just do it all on your own? My top agent, I do still do the old Zillow, you know, co-marketing because okay. he's driven to get into how Zillow's shifted it to be like, they got to be like some premier agent Zillow. Like they've kind of shifted their target on the realtor side. Yeah. And he's going to get in there and he feels like the slice of the pie is really good with the way that Zillow's restructured once he gets into that top tier. Yeah. And we refer business to each other for a long time. So I've hung in there with them on that. Got it. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to go just because we're coming up on our 30 minutes here and I wanted to kind of get in. So if anybody wants to fire in some questions into chat, we, we have a couple in here um, just asking like, are you using a calendar app uh, like a Calendly or a bookings, anything like that? I've Calend Calendly set up with my website. So yes, it does. It does okay. produce um, inquiries through there and through my Google business has a link to Calendly also. Okay, cool. Um, and then as far as post close, like, do you have a, um, are you using a, a separate post close system? What do you use on that front? No, I use Arbor system. I use the closing gift um, campaign that that box that gets delivered is like it, like nine out of 10, you get something good out of that. So, okay. So you're using the gift goose that Arbor already just sets up for you. And then yeah. you just kind of manage your database inside of EOS. And then just your monthly mortgage update. I have HomeBot as well. Okay. Uh, I get a lot of responses back on HomeBot. So people are, oh. They're active through HomeBot. Got it. And um, we got another question in terms of like how how many active referral partners do you have? I was always I always wanted to have twenty. You know. Okay. Do you think you're at that number now, or do you think you're at more than that? That you'd count as like really high quality referral partners? Probably, I'm probably down off of that. Um, okay. I like to I'm be 20. <laughs> well, yeah, I think 20 times five gets me a hundred deals, you know? Okay. But I like that. I'm like a hundred deals is a good year. So, yeah. um, but then it's like, I guess kind of, I'm just a person of my word. Like if I say, I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Um, so I'm careful on what I say. Guy referred me a deal. The other, like, a month ago and I just, and I told him I was going to get him a referral. So 
I wrote it on my computer and I just sent him one so I can check that box off. You know, I'm pretty nice. disciplined like that. So yeah. Awesome, dude. And then is there, so, um, you know, that there's, we don't have any more questions. I'm just curious and just in terms of like closing, is there anything else you'd like to share out there that we didn't cover in terms that you think might help Arbor loan officers through the, through the rest of the year? I just think that just embrace the rising rates. Um, even today I'm thinking, um, all right, uh, there's opportunities again for that prior pre-approval, you know, that email that went out um, where it's like, cause buyers are getting crushed. It's like, and rates are getting crushed. And I get, you get people that are getting quoted seven and a half on VA wanting 20,000 in closing costs. It's like another time to tune up that um, we might just send it the whole company, you know, tune up that pre-approval again, because there could be agents out there that, they're working with the wrong lender, you know? Well, right. So the, the point there being is that you've got rates rising up and the pre-approvals aren't valid anymore. And you've got realtors that are sitting there with, with buyers out there shopping. And, and not only that, anymore. Yeah. They well, and then, and then that's get that pre-approval tuned up. And then also like become like not only your listing agent friend, but somehow get them to brand. You're the, the seller's preferred lender, a lot like a buyer. They don't, you know, Realtors have to give three referrals, but what about a seller um, saying on that use my seller's preferred lister or realtor or agent? Lender, agent. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> I, know where, I know where you're at. Yeah. So that right. May, right. So like when you get after that listing agent and typically, right, because they're, you know, someone's moving, someone needs a loan, right? And those listing agents are controlling that process just as much as the buy side guys. And that's almost, they have it even bef way beforehand, right? You know? Like they know kind of up front if somebody's coming on that listing agent's side of things, the listing agent knows way ahead if they've got a mover on their hands. Well, and look at that, you know, agents are getting smarter. Look at that interest rate on the contract. Yeah. Your listing agent. That's a great point, right? And that's especially right now, right? Because that rate on that contract, if that doesn't sync up, especially where the current market is, that's, you know, in terms of educating them, especially in the rising rate environment, because you can just have, you know, that's, I guess that's probably a good point of deal fallout, right? I mean, if, if rates are rising and going up and they've got, you've got these pre-approvals that were just at six and a half, now they're at seven and a quarter, you probably have a handful of those that are going to, are going to bust, right? And you're asking for yeah. a seller contribution and maybe they get a second opinion on their loan and the seller can keep 10 or 15 in their pocket. Yeah. So we got a couple other questions here. I'll just hit these up. Um, so, did you do you do any renos? I don't. I don't. I don't think I put that you're a reno guy. But somebody asked if you if you do renovations up there. I've never I think maybe somebody a probably, renovation, but I think they probably thought Reno one. is maybe they thought Reno was <laughs> reno. Like no one's going to live in Reno. No. We must be talking about renovation <laughs> loans. <laughs> uh, so Kevin's in Reno. He's not a renovation specialist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And then, uh, so what percentage of your business is coming from the Reno area versus statewide? And then are you using uh, best offer package at all with, with your partners? I, it's Washoe, yeah, Northern Nevada is 90% of my business. Okay. Yeah. And, and then are you using best, best offer package at all? I've not used best offer package at all. Shame. <laughs> yeah. No, I. It's all good. God, that makes me stressful, stressed out. That's all good, dude. There's no stress. I love it, but I can't do the realtor's job for them. You know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of well, then we're moving on to that side where we're just trying to, you know, it's like one of those things when you use best offer, even if you use it from a pre-approval standpoint, we're going to start really dialing in just for the LO because to your point, like the realtors, they don't have the velocity of transactions that they're, that they have. It's hard for them to adopt new technologies because they don't, they don't use they don't have enough transactions to use that technology. Like they're only doing one offer every two or three months. Like I do like I, that. If you, you make know. it a pre-approval, like specific. Yeah. Then I'm, I'm all over that. Yeah. Cool. Which, which I'll, I'll offline. I'll show you that, but that's, that's on it's that's in the apps. All right, cool. Well, we are, uh, we're at 36 minutes. So dude, I just wanted to, uh, one, thank you again, man, for spending, the first part of your day with us, dude, giving us some, there's definitely some nuggets in there. Hopefully um, everybody that was on the call, if you didn't pick up, this is going to be recorded. So we'll post it on Spotify and YouTube. 
And um, thanks again, buddy. Yeah, thanks. See ya. All right, buddy. Bye. See you, Kevin. Later, man.